Hey, bro. <laughs> she needs some serious body work. So do you. Where are we gonna get a fender for a 65 pure lead? 66. Why not? 1966 Ford Fairlane. 65. 66, 67, and 68. All have interchangeable fenders. Mucho dinero. Definitely a 66. Better fill your tanks tonight, folks. Gas is jumping another dime come morning and gonna keep climbing just like this next tune's up, 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 climbing the charts. Looks like we got us a little fuel efficiency problem. Gas tank's got a hole in it. Hey, babe, what time is it? Go time, baby. Hey, we just got this home. I can't trust this guy with it. What do you got? It's kind of engine. Let's go. To whom it may concern, we might give a damn. In the event of my untimely death and writing this account of a worldwide conspiracy which transpired between the years 1977 and this day, on which I put pen to paper. On April 4th, 1977, I made the discovery that would put big oil out of business. For God's sake, some well, let's go. Come on, a couple minutes. Maybe the most important discovery since Thomas Edison lit up the planet. We are systematically, we are turning, systematically toward turning toward eternal darkness with our addiction to fossil fuel. But nobody cares. Because we have got to be the dumbest bastards in the history of the universe. Are you ready, Mr. Endicott? I'm so ready, Mrs. Endicott. Next stop. Immortality. From the Oval Office, President Carter predicted a national catastrophe, a moral equivalent of war on our decreasing energy supplies. Ours, said the President, is the most wasteful nation on Earth. Hello, Mr. Bear? Yeah. Mr. Bear? Said yeah. Ah, young citizens, how can I help you? My dad told me I ever get back this way. You're a straight shooter. Tom Endicott. Sergeant Tom? You're little Richard. <laughs> wop, bop, a loop, bop, bop, bam, boom, sir. <laughs> My wife, you. Emily. Very nice to meet you, Mr. Uh, Pleased to meet Sorry. you. I'd like to work with you, sir. Richard's a very fine mechanic, Mr. And Bennett. in exchange, you let me use one of your bays at night and I cut you out of my invention. Invention? What invention? Mr. Baird, you know how people are always trying to build a better mousetrap? No. What would you say if I said I could make a car run 100 miles on a gallon of gas? Well, I'd ask you what you've been smoking and where can <laughs> I get a whole bunch of it for free? I was cutting grass and my mower gave out, so I took the carburetor off and there was just gas just spurting out, like, like shooting stars, Cal, and, and just BOOM! Wow, it's still running. Still running. I really like that lawnmower. I love that nah, lawnmower. Nah, I love that lawnmower. You should have a child by that lawnmower. I should have a child by that lawnmower. Six hours, 16 minutes. And the Nobel Prize goes to the youngest inventor, genius, savior of the world, Richard Endicott. Whoa! 96 hours and 16 minutes on a quart of gas? That's huge. You did it. We did it. Okay, so the Endicott system works on a lawnmower. Now, will it work on a car? Damn right it will. We have to find out. We need money. A thousand dollars. We can't ask Cal for that. No. Who? Someone. Someone with vision. Someone who knows cars.
Mr. Rogers, meet the Endicott Mobile. Ta-da! Hard, I hate to tell you this, but your engine here got no carburetor. Mr. Rogers, you have just divined the secret of the Endicott Mobile. There is no carburetor. It's very simple. And that box is not a carburetor because you don't need one if the fuel's already in vapor form when it reaches where the carburetor used to be before it became unnecessary. Which Lord, which look did. at the time. Uh, and Mr. Rogers, look here. Gasoline, match. It's the fumes that are explosive. Not the liquid. See, Richard Systems sends the vapors from the gas tank up underneath the car to the engine right here. So you don't need a carburetor. I know it sounds crazy, but... <laughs> Shush up, Rich. Let the man think. I bought my car from you, sir. This one. And you said if you could ever do anything for me to get in touch. Hard people don't mean that when they say it. We shouldn't say it then, because I took you at your word, sir. I reckon folks who saw Mr. Franklin standing outside in the middle of an electrical storm flying a kite must have thought he'd lost a marble or two. Throw in that towel, you get yourself a deal. <laughs> it generally traps enough vapor between it and the vapor equalizer. Figure 16 to start the engine, right? I could get braces. Let me get rich. I could get my teeth fixed. No. Will somebody verify that I have two gallons of gasoline here? Las Cruces to Lordsburg, New Mexico is 200 miles, just for the record, huh? 228 miles, just for the record. We'd like one of you to ride along with Mr. Endicott, just Shotgun. to make sure. Here we go, Rich. M, 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 M. I don't want any added weight in the back. Oh, okay, I'll stay here. Right, thanks. So where'd you go to college, Rich? Never finished high school, ma'am. You're a high school dropout. Majored in pool hustling and internal combustion engines before NAM. You know, you don't look like a pool hustler. Precisely the advantage I had, ma'am. He left his wife? He didn't leave her. There was no room. He left his wife standing there, scratching her ass, and drove off after immortality? Oh, God bless the male of the species. So where'd you meet your wife? We met in Las Cruces. She's brilliant, the smartest person I know. You have a lot of credit to your wife, man. I couldn't do it without her, let's put it that way. You're gonna put stuff in there about Emily, right? What do you hope to accomplish, Richard? Make millions, be the most famous inventor of the world? Well, those would be good, but really I just want to wave adios to all the pollutants eating the hole in that blue sky. Nice dream, Richard. Thanks. My mom used to say, do one thing for somebody every day. I just think we need to make a better world for my kids. I didn't realize that you had children. No, we don't, not yet. We're gonna just as soon as we can leave them a better place than what we found. Well, you want something good to write about? We just passed the great gas efficient dot and smile for gallon record. For the border, the drink and dance and never time. I want to cross the river, we don't leave my blue. Guard the gas tank. <laughs> Aren't you gonna put in just an itty bitty bit? No, ma'am. Please don't call me, ma'am. Two gallons of gas. So are you gonna be the first person in line to buy an Endicott mobile? You make it back, I promise I'll be the first person in line. I can live with that. I don't know. Out of gas, Mr. Endicott? What the hell happened? I heard a thump. What happened? 
rocket fuel on story 10. About 30 miles out. Children, what's written in Las Cruces, New Mexico, isn't going to get read in Detroit, Michigan. She was very supportive of most of what she said. Richard. Revolution or hoax? I'm not the god of rocks. I can't control bouncing gravel. How stupid was I to put a protective sleeve on a stupid hose? How about you don't crack your gum? Thank you. Hey, I'm sorry. Dad's garage. Can I ask who's calling? Richard, ain't Detroit, but Flint. Flint, Michigan, boy, General Motors. He specifically said that number and that word. GM has bought 376 similar engine system patents in the last 20 years. Yep, but as soon as I get mine, they'll give me 5,000 bucks. <laughs> How much? 5,000. <laughs> if they bought 376 similar patents, why hasn't there been one car out of Michigan gets decent gas mileage? Because mine works. I figure none of those other patents work. They don't want to spend hundreds of millions to retool every auto manufacturing plant to accommodate a new system. I never guessed who I got a call from. Sounding about as oily as you might expect, wants to pay us a visit as regards the Endicott system. Well, whoever he is, why'd he call you and not Richard? Let me be straight with you. This vaporized fuel idea has been around for 50 years. You're just the latest in a long line of bright men looking to cash in on an idea that so far hasn't worked. All of us, of course, continue to hope that we can take one of these rudimentary systems and make it work. With that hope in mind, the Texas American Petroleum Corporation is prepared to purchase your system and all of its direct and tertiary rights for what we believe to be a fair sum. If you look on page two, I think you'll find the figure you're looking for. How much? Twenty-five. Thousand, really? Wow. No, um, million. You will, of course, let your attorneys at the fine print, but I assume that we have an agreement in principle? I think I speak for all of us when I say we are pleased to accept your offer. you'd offer me that kind of money. You know the Endicott system is gonna work and you want not the millions, but the billions it will generate. Or two, you know it'll work and you want to suppress it. What I think is you're the flunky of every oil company in the country and they're the lackeys of every puke in the Arab oil nation all over the globe. You all pitch in a couple million each. Jump change. Sir, I apologize for my part. Quit this. kissing his ass, Skip. Richard. Cal, am I crazy here? I'm not sure, son. You want to accept the money from them so my invention can rot in some underground bunker somewhere in some desert while the environment goes to hell in a handbasket? What did you just tell me about all the patents that GM bought up? Richie, as your only monetary investor, I have to insist... Cal, what I want us to do is I want to get my patent. I want us to market my system to every car company in the world. What do you say? All right, son. It's democracy at work, Skip. Two against one. Give them the papers back. Mr. Endicott, Texas American is just as interested as anyone in reducing our dependency on fossil fuels and automobiles in this country. Mr. You are a disgraceful liar. Richard, I'm afraid that I'll draw a million vials of blood in that lab and you'll sweat a million gallons of it in that garage and we'll, we'll never have a flesh and blood family.
skip call back yet. Emily! What? Em, the skip call back. You that five minutes ago. No! Jesus. <laughs> hey, Skip. I called you a couple days ago. Yeah, I got that call. Why didn't you call me back? I didn't want to. I need another $2,000. You need another $2,000 and we're going to have $25 million? You wanted to take $25 million? We, we could have had billions. You know, but considering that you can't convince the patent office that you haven't invented something that's already been patented, my share of $25 million looks pretty damn good. Okay, fine. You want out? Well, we'll change the world one dang car at a time. We get a dozen phone calls a day just from local people wanting to turn their guzzlers into Endicott mobiles. A dozen a day? Really? The point is, the demand is there. Do not point your finger at me, or I will squash your eyeballs in my greedy car dealer hands like canned peas. I'm sorry, continue your game. As soon as I figure this out. There's always something else to figure out. Yeah, it's a bitch. What now? The new additives. The oil companies are creating different vaporization points than before for their gas. They're clogging my filters. Figure it out tomorrow. I gotta work on people's cars tomorrow, Em, so Cal can pay me my slave wages and we can make the payments on the house. <laughs> Let the bank take it. We can sleep in the Endicott mobile. You think this is funny? Mm -hmm. Hilarious. You think it's a joke that no one can get ahead of these farts? The farts, Richard? The farts. Yeah, I think they're changing the gas in a conspiracy against you personally. The conspiracy, Emily, is against me and any other dumb bunny dumb enough to challenge the oil cabal that isn't going to let anybody break it. And if anybody gets too close to getting it busted, they're going to rot or die trying or just die. And if you don't see that I'm not just some paranoid lunatic, then I pity you because that makes you a moron. Alrighty then, Richard. I believe I'll buy myself a dog. Hey, I'm sorry. No, you're not. Look, I'm telling you, that little house is going to fit in our living room someday. And you know what else, huh? No! I don't know what. I have no idea what. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'm going to build my shop right outside your kitchen door. I'll see you when I see you. Hi, Emily. How you doing? Good. I came to take Richard to see Star Wars again. Oh, he left early today. I, I wouldn't mind seeing Star Wars again. You okay? Sure. I'm fine.
God's sake, brush your teeth. Where's the goddamn toothpaste? Isabel sent me off as a boy and took me back two tours later, an old man. Took me longer than it should to know this, but what I think is the harder she tried, the angrier I got. What happened to us, it was just a disgrace. I found a strand of your hair And it turned me right back around Did you put it there Where I'd find and change my mind Be taken unaware found a place in myself where you fit unexpectedly you and nobody I've revised the spec on the issue three times, sir. I've explained to you in detail. It's already been another year. Why should it take another three months? Big oil pay you to suppress my invention, Skip? Are you crazy? Uh, definitely on the way. I'm not completely there yet. But I gotta say, part, I'm broke. You live here. How'd you swing it? Let's take it. Take what? The 25 mil. Tell him what the hell. Let's take it. Let's. Sixty percent of that goddamn filthy twenty-five million bucks tip. Hey, 
control yourself. For God's sake. Nobody can take you seriously like this. Go home. Think it's over? You cheater. Stay the hell out of there, pal. You touch me, I will kill you. I think you're too drunk, boy. Shot to death last night. And Endicott waged a four year battle oil with the United States to suppress his invention. Though there is no evidence, his Endicott's blood had high levels of Richard Endicott was the most significant inventor of the century you never heard of. This is Rita Martinez, News Channel 6. What happens? What the hell happens to our dreams? Emmy and me. We were happy. We were happy. We must change to win Emily back. While there's time. If there's time, if I can. If you find this letter in my life's work, and I'm gone, I hope I did. I hope I changed. Okay, that's it. I'm done. Sincerely, Richard Endicott. You ready to finish this for him? Get his patent? Take down Big Oil? I can go for saving the world. And though we are both humanitarians at heart, dude, we can make some serious scratch. Could be dangerous. Bring it.
You see? 